This video will cover getting set up and organizing EndNote 20 on a Mac. To get Now, once EndNote has been installed, just click on the EndNote 20 icon. And at this point, if you click EndNote 20, you see that EndNote 20 logo pop up, but nothing else changes on the screen. That's okay, it's supposed to happen. At the top left of my screen, please note that it says EndNote 20. Now from there, click on that and then File, New. At this point, you will have to create your own EndNote library, which is where all your references will be stored to be used with a word processor like Microsoft Word. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, by default, it will be My EndNote Library. For Mac users, one thing to note is where it is stored. When you click on that, please make sure it says documents or it's on your local hard drive and not under the cloud. So if you use Apple's iCloud storage to supplement your device's hard drive space, please do not use that when you are saving your EndNote library. It can lead to the corruption of your library, which would render it inaccessible. So again, please keep it on documents on your local hard drive and then click Save. At this point, you've just opened your EndNote library and the amount of workable space seem, appears quite limited, but to remedy that, you can just close this little sidebar. And as you can see, there's a much larger field of view. Now, at this point, there are some recommended uh, settings that changes that can be made to your settings. One thing to note would be this top bar right here are the filters that you, you can use to organize your library in terms of viewing experience. It is recommended you change this to include certain pieces of information that would be more relevant depending on your discipline. To do that, just right click or two finger tap on the top bar. And from this menu, you might, you will want to deselect some of them. I always recommend unselecting red and unread status. And reference type. And rating. And then from there, I would scroll all the way down to the very bottom until I see name of database, database provider, and URL. The reason to why I want these pieces of information is because they will tell me which databases I may have acquired this a given reference from, uh, assisting me in terms of further follow-up research if I do find a source or for documenting it in the case of a systematic review and filling out a Prisma. Now, after you have some references in your EndNote library, uh, some other things to check out are, so if I double click a reference, scroll, the sidebar will appear and it will show me that reference. Notice that on the bottom it says annotated, which is the reference or a citation style that is being used. The default will start you off in annotated, but if you click on that, you can select APA 7. If you do not see your citation style here, just select the select another style option where you can view a full list of what is available with EndNote by default. So I will change this to APA 7 and it will change live as we can see here. So this is how the bibliographic entry will appear for this reference. Now you may wanna change, make a few changes. So you wanna go up to tools, output styles, and edit APA 7. For APA 7, while it does appear 100% proper APA, you have to make a few minor changes to uh, streamline it so it's 100% correct for all your references going forward. So I'll click on that. And under bibliography, under where it says title capitalization, 
I just want to make sure it says sentence style capitalization. Because in APA style citations, the title should always be in sentence case, like you're writing, typing out a regular sentence, and only the first word and proper nouns will be capitalized. At this point, I can just close this out and it'll ask me if I want to save the changes. And I can do that by clicking save. And it's going to ask me to change the name. And at this point, I always recommend naming it sentence case. Just so it's easily identifiable. And I have to select a, this drop down menu, select another style. And now I have to select APA 7th sentence case and choose. So now there it is. In addition to the earlier sentence case change, a specific to APA citation style, Journal titles have to be fully spelled out. Things cannot be abbreviated from the very beginning. They have to be spelled out first, and then an abbreviation has to be assigned to it. So in this case, int j jrr psychiatry is not accepted for APA citation style. So we have to force that change. And to do that, you go to, so you wanna go to library, open term lists, journals, term list because we are looking to change the journal title abbreviation. And you'll have a list of the, rep, the journal titles available that are already present in your EndNote library. So I'm going to select all. And to do that, you can click and drag, uh, or you can select Command A on the keyboard. And I want to delete these terms. And this is a you can't fill a cup if it's already full kind of metaphor. We can't assign, we can't correct these mistakes if we don't first remove the mistakes. Now that this list is empty, I can click on the second tab where it says lists, make sure journals is highlighted, and then I wanna import a list. So from here, it's gonna take a little diving. You wanna click on applications on the left side. So you wanna to go to your applications folder, then you wanna to go to EndNote 20, terms, and then medical text and choose. So this would be the medical subject journal terms list. And you know you're in the right place if you see a pop-up window that says 4,500 terms have been added to your journal's term list. If I click OK and go to terms, now this list is a lot more pop, uh, populated. And when I click close, click somewhere else and come back. And now it says International Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry. And finally, to organize my references, once I've had a few added to my library and to specific folders, I can do that as well. So on the top of the screen, you'll see groups. And now you have two options. You can either assign them to a folder and then name specific subfolders or just create the subfolders. So to create a large folder, you would go to create group set and name it. This is best if you're assigning a major subject. Uh, so in this case, I might look at animal assisted, assisted therapy as my major subject and then assign more specific folders. So that would fall under create group and then canines or equin for horses and the like, and then drag my references in there accordingly. Alternatively, I can just highlight my the default my groups folder and create various subfolders. It could be for various courses that I'm working on or projects. So I could say nursing 804 or depression, and then transfer the references accordingly. 
So if I click on the folder, I will only see the references that are assigned to that folder and not my full reference library. But if I do want to go back to that library, I can simply click all references on the left and see a full list of my references.